Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today is market conflict. I am joined by my distinguished colleagues, Bobby Norman and Ashley Page, and we've just finished a, a great meeting addressing clients' questions and concerns. Uh, we've got clients asking us, how can the market continue to move up so strongly if we're still seeing on Main Street uh, businesses close? as well as hearing uh, different negative reports when it comes to the COVID virus and, and other topics. So with that, Bobby, I thought you had some great charts and made some really good points in our meeting this morning. So why don't you start us off just going over why the market is still so strong? Yeah, Greg, I had numerous conversations, uh, family and friends over Thanksgiving, as well as clients last week, uh, talking about, you know, like you said, about why is the market showing so much strength when it still looks like Main Street's continuing to hurt. Uh, so three main points of why it makes sense to, to see the market where it is. One, the Federal Reserve continues to remain accommodative, lower rates for longer, and the Federal Reserve has been a huge driver of the, of the market strength really since April. Uh, the second thing is housing, and you'll see in this chart here, housing market continues to show a lot of strength. So people taking advantage of the lower rates I just talked about, uh, but a, housing, a healthy housing market usually means a, a semi-healthy uh, economic report. So looking good there. Third thing, corporate profits. Profits beat expectations in the third quarter. We're back to the level we saw at the fourth quarter of 2019 looking pretty good. So again, corporate profits are really looking good here. But having said that, yes, we, we realize the market is showing strength, but there are reasons that can remain cautious. Uh, we're watching the virus case very carefully here uh, to see what happens in the next two, three weeks. Uh, and then also, going back to 1950, we know that in the, the month of December, uh, the first two weeks of the market are usually choppy. A lot of that usually has to do with tax selling, tax law selling, watching that carefully. And then the last two weeks are historically fairly good. So again, no guarantees, uh, but something we're watching. Um, but again, conflicting news on the virus versus the good news on the vaccine. We'll see who wins out here. Well, and, and Bobby, you're making great points there as well. As we go into 2021, there's been discussion about tax rates going up and those kind of things. So tax loss selling may be a, a bigger topic. That's what we're hearing from CPAs that uh, we work with and who work with our clients, as well as from the standpoint of the estate attorneys saying people are looking and rethinking their estate work based on should rates go up or, or different tax strategies need to be in place. So this December may be related more to what may happen or anticipation of next year versus uh, what's actually going on in the economy. So the first two weeks of December could very well be more volatile, and we want to prepare our clients for that. Now, Ashley, in those discussions, you you also jumped in there to talk about housing starts, I believe, and, and how strong they are. Yeah, absolutely. I thought Bobby's state on that, Greg, uh, was really good. But in addition to that, it's at a 14-year high. And as we all know, that housing leg of the stool post-2008, it just wasn't very robust for years. But, you know, now that as a component of our economy is really strong at the moment, to Bobby's right. point. Yeah. And then the other thing that I really appreciate you bringing up was just about the, the, the CEO viewpoints. Uh, you know, we're watching closely how management of these corporations, the stocks, uh, that we follow, that we put our clients in, uh, how they're handling the COVID situation. And uh, you brought some great points up that really complemented what Bobby was saying about the strength in the market. We follow a lot of data research. Uh, one that we follow is PricewaterhouseCoopers on the state of, they do a lot of interview with CEOs, CFOs, C-suite people that are running these companies, to your point, Greg, that our clients have their money in. So about two weeks ago, they did a survey that basically said, look, if we get further lockdowns with COVID, where are you? And number one, they said, well, of course, we're a little bit concerned about it. But the overwhelming response from all those C-suite folks running companies is we are a lot better prepared for it this time. Very true. You know, as we know, late spring, early summer, Greg, whether it was sales volume, locations, inventory control, anything that really impacts you strongly on either balance sheet or income statement was just sort of all over the place. Right. Well, these people have had a chance now to plan for this, work through this, and almost to a woman and man, they say, we're a lot better prepared this time. So I think even if you get more lockdowns coming up, it's going to be smoother. 
from yeah. a business perspective. Yeah, and I, I think the market's reflecting that as well, that they're prepared for it. And then also yes. the, the, the way p- consumers are, are making their purchases and involved in the economy is, is really different thanks to technology and the innovation that's uh, out there. And you made another good point, though, in regards to manufacturing. Share that, that information. I'll be happy to. If you look at uh, a lot of the market data we follow, Greg, we look at one index that's a good blend, as you know, between manufacturing and consumer. It's at its highest expansion level since March of 2015. That's amazing. So even before the pandemic, we're hitting a high in that with what people are spending, and particularly in manufacturing, and the key is the durable goods. A lot of manufacturers were well up above economic forecast in October in the durable goods uh, manufacturing component. But if you blend those, we're doing really well, really well. Yeah, yeah, the num- numbers speak for themselves, and that's why we chose the topic, market conflict. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting news out there, but we're seeing a lot of positive news as we're finishing up 2020 and going into the 2021 year. It's not going to be dull these next four weeks, but through our vlogs and communications, our, our Zoom and Microsoft team meetings and all the rest, we want to keep everybody updated as we move forward over these next four weeks. So here we are on the last day of November. Uh, As I said, it won't be dull. Uh, Continue to track us on all our our social media. Just know we're going to be putting out reports and we're available to have one-on-one meetings and phone conversations with you uh, anytime. We hope you have a great week. We thank you for sharing this vlog with others. And we'll keep you updated as we go into the last month of 2020. Take care. 